All right, hello everybody. So before I jump into this video, because it is going to be a voiceover, I thought I would just do a little hello to camera. I'm sorry that I've been gone for so long. I have just like almost had no time with work and doing other things to film anything. This week I decided that I would film every workout that I'm doing in my new program and I've moved it from a four week program to a six week program. So these are the splits and the exercises that I'm going to be doing for the next six weeks. So yeah, this is just a voiceover video of me going through all the workouts that I'm doing each day, talking through my split, yeah, taking you along to the gym with me. I think I'm going to try and do one of these videos every time I start a new program. All right, moving on to the video and just a warning. I'm pretty sure I remember recording the voiceover when I was quite tired after a long day. So um, my apologies if I'm sounding pretty flat. I haven't even edited it yet, so we'll see how it goes, but enjoy. Alrighty, hello everybody and welcome to this week's video where I'm just going to be taking you through my gym routine, how many times I go to the gym, my split. I'm starting the day like I do every day that I go to the gym with some pre-workout and also some fat burner as well. I just use the pre-workout and the fat burner both from Emerald Labs just because I can get it from Elite Sops which is in the shopping centre across the road. My routine is that I normally get up, make my pre-workout first and then I will change into my gear while I'm waiting for it to kind of kick in a little bit. And then I'll walk across the road to the gym in the freezing cold. So on Monday, I train glutes, quads and calves. I like to train glutes and my legs twice a week. But I have one session focused on quads and one on hamstrings. So Monday is quads and we're starting with one set of a warm-up with just the bar and then I'm moving into my sets so I do three sets of failure and I used to do the last set with added weight but I'm really struggling with 40 kilos at the moment so I'm just keeping it at 40 and seeing if I can potentially do any more reps in the last set but usually I can't. All the clips in this video I actually filmed in a deload week so I am actually lifting quite a bit less than what I normally would but I hadn't been to the gym in about three weeks so I thought that I shouldn't go straight into the weight that I was lifting before so with my squats I'm actually doing 30 kilos and it felt hard. Moving on to the second exercise, I do three sets of walking lunges and I normally have about 10 kilos in each hand but I think in my deload week I had about seven. I kind of changed my technique a little bit for the walking lunges. I'm kind of moving my hands so that they're in front and to the side of my legs rather than having both hands to the side and I'm also taking smaller steps to really focus on my quads as well. Here is also me struggling with balance and having to restart. The next exercise I go to the incline leg press and I actually do four sets of this because I never feel like three is enough. So I do four and I do between 10 and 12 reps depending on how hard I'm finding it. Like I said, the break did not serve me well and I'm lifting about 15 kilos less than what I normally would. All right, so moving on to a little superset. These burn when you put them together. So I'm doing three sets of 10 reps leg extensions and three sets of eight on each leg Bulgarian split squats. So I don't have too many supersets in my workout routines and I'm not a professional but I do only recommend doing supersets if you're short on time and to get the most out of them to be doing two back-to-back -back exercises that target the same muscle group and not different ones. So the leg extensions and the Bulgarian split squats are both targeting my quads. I'm moving on to calf raises. So I do three sets of 15 reps and then I move on to the very last exercise which I kind of use as a finisher. So I do three lots of 10 reps, goblet squats 
I'm also trying to make sure that my stance is a little bit narrower than usual to really target my quads. Finishing off with some cardio, I remember not having as much time as I would have liked on this particular day to do some cardio. Normally I like to do about 15 to 30 minutes. So I do actually have like a treadmill playlist on Spotify that has a couple slow songs to start and they get really fast and then a couple of slow songs to kind of cool down at the end. And I would really recommend matching the tempo of the song to the speed that you're walking on the treadmill. It just gives you that little bit of extra motivation to keep in line with the song. All right, and then moving on to some cool down stretches. This is actually the first time I ever use a foam roller. I don't know if you can tell, but I started off using it thinking that it wasn't doing anything and that it wasn't hurting. And then I moved over, rolled over to do my quads and you guys can see it started to hurt, but it was really good. And then I ended up just doing some other static stretches at the end, making sure that I hit all of the muscles that I was working in my legs that day. Alright, so moving on to Tuesday, day two, I'm doing back and biceps today. So again, I am starting with a warm-up set of the 20 kilo bar and then I'm moving on, adding a little bit of weight and I do four sets to failure of the barbell row. Moving on to a similar exercise, I'm doing a dumbbell row with a underhand grip and I'm doing three sets of 12 to 15. I really wanted to include two different types of rows with two different types of grips. This one I'm also incorporating my biceps so that kind of helps because I only have one bicep exercise at the end so having the underhand grip means that they're getting activated as well as my back. Moving on I'm doing four sets of 12 to 15 lateral pull downs. I've also changed my grip position so I have quite a narrow grip. I used to have a really wide grip but now I'm preferring to lean back slightly more and really pull right down and back um, to activate my lats. All right and then moving on to a cable row. Now I actually only do two normal sets of this and then I add in a drop set at the end. So I'm doing two sets of 12 to 15 reps and then my third set I will start at whatever weight I am using, do as many as I can, drop the weight do as many as I can and keep dropping it. I essentially just want to get as much out of this exercise as possible so I keep going down the plates until I get to the very last one but I'm trying to get to failure out of every single plate. The next exercise is similar but we have a single arm cable row. I have a little bit of asymmetry in my back and honestly you know, my left side is a lot weaker than my right side in a lot of senses. Moving on to face pulls. This is one of my favorite exercises for the back. And similar to the cable row, I'm only doing two normal sets of 10 reps. And then I have one drop set. So whatever I have as my starting weight, I will go to failure and then just keep dropping the weight till I get to the smallest plate trying to get to failure on every single plate. And then the last exercise for this day is a Zopnin curl. So this also not only targets your biceps but your forearms as well and your wrists with the rotation of the curl. You're kind of getting a bicep curl but also a reverse curl in one and I do three sets of 12 reps. So I was working from home this week and I had a little bit of extra time to do some ab work. So I have kind of three different variations, but this particular day I did some weighted ab crunches slash sit up. I then moved on to some leg raises, which went into some flutters or leg flutters. And then I did some alternating toe touches as well, which really, really hurt. All of the exercises in this kind of routine that I decided to put together are all very similar. So it was all hurting by the end. And then I just decided to do some stretches. I tend not to do as many stretches after arm day, honestly, because I'm not 100% sure on 
that many stretches for your arms but I know a lot of leg stretches so I don't actually do that much um, so if anyone has any great stretches after arm day let me know so on Wednesdays I have a rest day I try and have an active rest day so I'm at least doing some form of exercise or I'm moving my body in some way but moving on to Thursday is glute and hamstring day so starting off the day I'm doing three sets of 10 to 12 reps of hip thrusts in my deload week I'm sticking to the safe 60 kilos but now I'm back up to 80 and I really want to crack 100 soon so maybe I set that as a goal for the end of the six weeks the next exercise is RDLs now since my deload I have kind of changed my workout routine for this day slightly so as you guys can see I'm doing the RDLs with dumbbells and this was actually my first ever time trying to use straps because I cannot lift these without straps but these are the weights that I'm strong enough to lift but my arms can't hold on to them so I thought that if I bought straps perfect amazing that sorts out the grip problem and I'll be able to hold the weight that I can lift but I struggled I could not for the life of me figure out how to use these straps you guys will see I like try so many times and it just does not end up working and I eventually give up and use a barbell but I have since changed from just doing dumbbell RDLs and now I'm doing three sets of 10 to 12 barbell RDLs and then I'm doing three sets of 12 to 15 single leg RDLs with my back leg on a bench and then leaning back using the bench for support but making sure that the weight is on the leg on the ground like I mentioned before I'm trying to work on some imbalances in my strength on each side so my left leg is a little bit weaker than my right leg so I'm adding in some single leg hamstring curls I'm doing three sets of 10 reps on each leg now sometimes I can't get to the full 10 sometimes I'm like struggling by seven or eight and what I normally do when that happens is I'll do seven on one leg seven on the other and then go back to the first leg and try and finish the last three it just means that I'm still getting the 10 I know I'm breaking it up but I still like to hit that 10 if I can then I also do like to include a seated hamstring curl just means that I am still doing an exercise where I can lift a lot more weight because I am using both legs so I'm doing three sets of 12 seated hamstring curls I also with these like to try and keep the tension so I'm trying not to just let my legs fling back up I'm trying to kind of lift them back up slowly then I'm moving on to my finisher I have a superset focused on my hamstrings so I'm doing three sets of 12 good mornings just with a lighter weight because I really want to focus on hinging back at the hip without worrying about my back giving out with too much weight and then I'm supersetting that with three sets of 12 reps of kettlebell swings and I'm really making sure that I am focusing on utilizing my hamstrings with the kettlebell swings. I don't remember having enough time to do any cardio after this day or work on the treadmill as a cool down for my legs. I did end up doing some stretches though but I didn't get it on film. So in my current split on Fridays, I train chest and shoulders. This has quite possibly got to be my favorite day of the week. When I first started going to the gym, I definitely thought that I was going to enjoy training legs more. That quite quickly changed to preferring back and biceps. And trust me, it is still a very close second, but I think chest and shoulders might have just inched its way to the top of the list I absolutely love how much strength I've gotten in my arms and how much improvement I've made in my bench press speaking of that is the first exercise of this day so I do a warm-up with the 20 kilo bar and then I do three sets of 10 reps 
of the bench press and if I can try and squeeze any more reps I normally do with my bench press I'm trying to move from a really wide grip to a bit more of a narrow grip and coming down closer to my rib cage rather than out right across my chest. I am moving to a dumbbell incline bench press so I do three sets of 10 and it's kind of similar if I can push out any more reps I normally will. For deload I think I was using 8 kilo dumbbells on each hand. I think I went to grab the 9s but they were taken and I didn't think I wanted to go for the 10s for my deload but normally I would do a 12.5. My next exercise is a barbell overhead press and I decided to use the Smith machine. Now I'm not actually 100% sure how much the bar by itself on the Smith machine weighs so if anyone knows please let me know but I think I have 1.25s on each side but I did them this week and I was able to have 2.5s on each side and I actually got through it pretty easy so I think having this week easing my way back into it also little brag but like I'm really happy with how my back is turning out like I know this is a shoulder exercise but you can just see kind of the definition in my back slightly getting there and I'm really happy with it. I'm really proud. Moving on to a barbell front raise. I do three sets of 10 reps. And this is an exercise that I surprised myself. I thought I was going to have to use the bars on the rack that are like the 10, you know, 10, 12, 15 kilo bars. But I decided to give it a go with the 20 kilo bar and I was able to do it honestly no problem so I'm really excited to be able to have the 20 kilos as my starting point and build up from there throughout the rest of my program. Moving on I have a dumbbell lateral raise so I'm doing three sets of 12 reps and I think I have three kilos on each side for this but I moved up to a four kilo with my regular weight but I think I do need to do a form check. I don't think these look that great so I am going to get some help in that respect because I think the form for these could be a lot better and the last two exercises of this day they're not a super set but they are targeting the same muscle group and I'm doing it back to back so these are two tricep exercises I have tricep pull downs and I'm also for the very first time doing assisted tricep dips so starting with the pull downs I'm doing three sets of 12 reps and then for the tricep dips I'm doing three lots of failure. So this was the first time that I've ever done assisted tricep dips so I'm actually again not 100% sure if my form was right. I don't know how like far down or far up you're supposed to go. Someone let me know but I was actually quite impressed with myself about like how much weight I could do it with like I thought I'd have to have a lot more weight to support myself but I found myself flooring it like a couple times because I was a little bit stronger than I thought which was which was a nice end to the workout. I did have some time afterwards to do some abs so I did two sets of everything I did some cable crunches some side plank crunches which I kind of don't think I was doing them right because I didn't feel like they were doing anything. Then I moved on to some mountain climbers and some dead bugs. Now dead bugs I think are the most underrated ab exercise ever and I love them. They hurt so much because I normally do them to failure until like it really hurts but I think they're underrated and I don't think many people put them in their program. And then I did these like extended toe touch crunch things that I saw online one time so I decided to add them in but these were really hurting because again I've kind of with my ab workouts that I do when I have enough time I've put very similar exercises like in a bunch together. Alright so Saturday is another rest day which means we can move on to the last day thank god because I'm sick of hearing my own voice. Sunday I do a full body day which I've only recently incorporated into my program and I've really been enjoying it. 
So the first exercise I am doing, I'm starting with a pull-up. So I'm doing four sets to failure and then either at the last two sets or just the last one, I'm trying to lessen the weight that is assisting me to make it a little bit harder and then also seeing how many I can do with less weight. Moving on, I have some deadlifts and I don't have these in my back or any of my leg days so I definitely needed to include it somewhere in my program which is the exact reason I added in a full body day is because sometimes when I'm making programs I just shove in way too many exercises that is not manageable to get done in one session so having a full body day at the end of the week allows me to get all those favorite exercises that I couldn't quite fit in to my normal days and I can have them at the end of the week on the Sunday. So for my deadlifts I'm doing three sets of 10 to 12 reps. Finishing off the legs I'm adding in a sumo squat so I have a very large stance. I'm using one dumbbell and holding it with both hands and I'm doing three sets of 15 reps. So with the sumo squat I'm really trying to push through the backs of my hamstrings but also mostly my glutes and I'm not necessarily coming up the whole way like a regular squat I'm really trying to keep tension and almost doing a pulse but not quite but also not quite doing a full squat so I had to add in some extra chest work so my next exercise is the incline chest press machine and I'm doing three sets to failure. I have 15s on each side which I have been stuck on for the longest time only really getting between 8 and 10 reps in a set so this is something that's going to be a goal for me. I want to try and get to 20 each side by the end of the six weeks so this is something I'm really going to have to push and challenge myself and work towards. Straight after that I'm moving into a push-up which I have not had in my program for the longest time. I was doing really well at making progress with my push-ups and then I just didn't incorporate them into my program but I have added them back for that very reason. So similar to the chest press I'm doing three sets to failure. I have decreased in progress because I've had to go down to my knees when I was getting to the point where I wasn't having to do that. This is also another goal to try and make sure that I can get back to doing 10 to 15 reps without having to go to my knees. Alright and then I have three exercises back to back that are targeting smaller muscle groups. So I am starting with a barbell bicep curl. I have actually changed to using the straight bar because I didn't necessarily like using this. I'm actually not sure what it's called but the zigzaggy bar. <laughs> so I moved back to a straight bar this week but I'm doing three lots of 10 to 12 reps with a barbell. Then I have some skull crushes to target my triceps. I'm not 100% sure if I was doing these right but then I saw someone doing them like the next week and they were doing them the same as what I was doing them so I think I'm doing them right but I ended up doing three sets of 10 to 12 reps but I'm pretty sure I got to 12 for most of them. And then last but not least I'm doing some cable lateral raises. So I'm doing three sets of 10 to 12 on each side but again I'm pretty sure I got to 12 each set which was really good and I have it on the 1.5 but I have one of those little extra weights on the, on the top. I'm not sure if they're one kilo or two kilos so I'm either doing two kilos or three kilos but this weight hasn't changed from my deload to my normal week yet. Going up that little bit extra to the 3.75 is still a bit too much for me. Oh. Oh.